How you doing everybody? It's me again. Welcome to the Bitman TV channel. Um, we're going to do a review of Raw and Smackdown week commencing the 7th of November. If you could first see, like and subscribe to my channel, that would be so kind of you. I'm trying to get this channel up, so if you could like and subscribe to this channel, that would be very, very kind of you. Uh, we do give to charities here. Um, we're currently giving charities to people suffering from um, epilepsy, so if you could help us uh, get this channel up and get the word out, that'd be so great of you and so kind of you. So the show starts off with the Usos coming out with Solo, basically saying how they're the ones and they're gonna defend the titles on SmackDown against New Day to become the longest reigning WWE Tag Team Champions in the history of SmackDown, or well, of WWE, not the SmackDown. Then their New Day come out and basically say, hey, don't forget about us, we're gonna beat you, we've got a match going on obviously back and forth. Then Riddle comes out and interrupts the whole thing and he wants everyone to take a turn on his bong. Yes, you heard me, bong. So everyone starts hitting his bong. New Day hit his bong. Jimmy surprisingly hits the bong. Then obviously uh, Solo, obviously Solo didn't say anything. And then he went to give to Jay to hit his bong and Jay hits the bong out of the way. And then that was that. So then we had a match there, six man tag, bloodline, including Solo versus the New Day and Riddle. A really good match, go and watch it. A very, very solid match to kick off Raw. But in the end, Solo won with a pin over Riddle. So massive, massive win there for Riddle. Then uh, JBL comes out, rips the crowd as he usually does all the time. Then he welcomes out Corbin, the next wrestling god, apparently. And then it was Corbin versus Cedric Alexander. Good to see Cedric Alexander back. I haven't seen him for a long time. I don't know where he's been, but I could see him back. But uh, unfortunately, he lost to Corbin, so Corbin won the match. Then we had Seth Rollins come out with his open challenge to anybody who wants a US title shot. Judgment Day come out, obviously Seth Rollins is outnumbered. And then Finn Balor says him and Seth have unfinished business because Seth cost Finn Balor the Universal Championship. As that was about to kick off, the OC come out and basically say they have got unfinished business as well. And then it leads them to a massive brawl. And um, the OC say also they've got someone joining someone to handle Rhea Ripley, and it's Mia Zim, uh, I believe I said, pronounced her name right, and she ba that basically flattened <laughs> the uh, Judgment Day, so we'll see what happens there. Then we had Otis versus Elias, really good match, but Otis won by the world's strongest slam. You should thank Mark Henry for that. Um, then we had a Judgment Day basically backstage saying how they're mad at what the OC have done, and it's just the beginning of what's going on. Then the next segment we have Bianca come out, um, Oscar and Alexa all calling out uh, damage control and then obviously damage control come out with Bailey and it turns to a massive brawl obviously then we had Fury versus Shelton Benjamin it's good to see Shelton Benjamin back on TV uh, I've been sending messages on his uh, <laughs> replying on his Instagram saying hey when are you back on TV so it's good to see him on TV they had a little <coughs> squirmish backstage the other uh, earlier in the night and it resulted in a match, but uh, unfortunately, Fury won. So that's that. Hopefully, we see Shelton again. Then we had the Miz coming out, basically saying the situation with uh, Dexter and Johnny will be sorted. And Johnny basically comes out and saying he's got footage of Miz, say, Miz basically admitting to paying off Dexter uh, to create some buzz around his name to, to attempt to be his stalker. And they showed the footage because Miz was meeting with an actress who posed to be a lawyer. So we'll see what happens there. Then we had Miz versus Johnny Gargano. That's that's what led into the match. Uh, good match, but uh, Miz actually won because he hit Johnny with a pipe. So not too good. Then we had Nikki, uh, Nikki versus Dana Brooke in a good match, but Nikki is now your new twenty four hour champion. Because Nikki is now Nikki Cross is now turned into bad Nikki Cross. So yeah. Then we had Seth called out for an open challenge, and who accepts in the back? It's none other than the. Ali, haha, <laughs> Mustafa Ali accepts. He accepts, but as he proceeded to go for the match, he was beaten down by somebody in the back. None other than a two-time WWE champion. None other than a former US champion. None other than the guy who did beat Brock Lesnar pillar to post, but was rolled up in the pin. The almighty Bobby Lashley. So Bobby Lashley comes out. He just basically floors Seth Rollins and beat him to pillar to post. There was no winner. It was just a vicious attack. Then Bobby basically leaves and then Fury comes out to cash in his money in the bank on Seth Rollins' US title. Yes, you heard it correct. Fury comes out to cash in a title on Seth Rollins' US championship. 
it makes no sense whatsoever to me. Why would you cash in on a US title? Why would you not cash in on Roman Reigns? That makes no sense whatsoever. But anyway, then it was Seth Rollins versus Fury in a match. Really good match, but Bobby Lashley comes down and trashes Fury again, uh, which leads to Seth getting the win. And he no longer has his money in the bank because he used it to cash in on Seth Rollins' US championship. But other than that, every other person has used it to cash in on a world championship that I know of. Let's go to SmackDown, shall we? So on SmackDown, we had the Usos come out. So it was the Usos versus the New Day uh, for the Tag Team Championships. If the Usos win this, they will be the longest reigning Tag Team Championships. Tag Team Champions, I should say, in history over the New Day. And it was an awesome match. Go and see it if you haven't seen it. A really good match. Go and watch it. But in the end, the Usos win. Uh, now SmackDown are doing a World Cup to, uh, World Cup tournament. The winner will get an Intercontinental Intercontinental Com Championship shot at a uh, Gunter, Gunther, Gunther. I think that's how you pronounce the name. So the first leg was um, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Escobar. Really good match. Escobar's pretty good. First time I've seen him on SmackDown, and then yeah, Escobar win. Really good match. Then in the next segment, you had the LA Knight basically saying what he's bringing to SmackDown, what he's looking for, and who confronts him from nowhere. <laughs> Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt's basically saying to LA Knight hey I can feel your pain I can feel your anger deep down inside do you want to help release the anger and then Bray and LA Knight sort of proceeds to sort of rip Bray Wyatt so Bray Wyatt just headbutts him for his trouble so <laughs> LA Knight better mind out he might be his first victim so he better mind out and then we had a six pack match for the normal contendership for Ronda Rousey's Smackdown Women's Championship you had Sonya versus Liv versus Shotsky versus Lacey versus Raquel versus Exio Lee, really good match. Go and watch it. Six pack women's match, really solid. But in the end, Shotsky, Shotsky won, wins. And then Shotsky backstage is confronted by um, Shayna Baszler, uh, who then is confronted by Ronda Rousey. But as Shayna, as Shotsky went to go look at uh, Shayna, I mean, Ronda Rousey, she was choked out. So yeah, <laughs> it was a pretty good segment, to be honest. And then we had Ricochet said he's ready to face Gunter uh, for the IC Championship, which will come up. Then we had another World Cup qualifier where it was Braun Strowman versus Jinder Mahal. Obviously, Jinder, obviously Braun won, so uh, Braun now um, proceeds in the tournament. Then we had Hit Row come out, basically doing the Hit Row stuff, but they were actually flattened by the new Viking Raiders with a lady. I didn't catch her name, but she has a name. And then, um, basically, in the main segment, in the main event, the bloodline come out with Roman Reigns, because backstage with Roman Reigns, he actually did say to the Usos, congratulations, but we've got some stuff to handle in the back, in the in the, in the arena. So we're going to do it tonight. So Roman Reigns basically come out. Roman Reigns is now 803 days as your champion, so congratulations to Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns basically proceeds to say, yep, yeah, they're the bloodline, they're doing their thing. And Roman Reigns says... He's about to do something he didn't think he was going to do. As he was about to do it, the brawling brutes come out and they run to the ring. It turns into a brawl. Sheamus comes out as well. And then out of the blue, while the brawl's happening, Drew McIntyre comes out to back him up also. Wow. So Drew McIntyre's now working alongside the brawling brutes and Sheamus, which is crazy, to go against the bloodline. And that's how uh, the show ended by everybody fighting. So... It was a great, great, uh, great uh, segment. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. But like, subscribe, and leave a comment on my channel. If you could be so kind, take care.